Closed captioning is brought to you by Insect Defend Patch. Deep free protection from biting insects. Well, we're in Nunavut in northern Canada and we're on the Tree River. And as a matter of fact, we're right on the river and right in front of the camp here on the Tree River. And this is one of the packages that are offered when you fish Great Bear Lake for trophy lake trout. We've spent two nights up here. We've had great fishing, beautiful hiking. I feel like I'm on, in a National Geographic episode because of the trails and the low ceiling and the waterfalls and the wildlife we saw on the way in. It's just amazing. And now, the highlight of being on the Tree River. It's not catching just a fish it's enjoying some of the fresh fish. So all I'm gonna be doing, I've got the fish fillet and what I've done is I have left the skin on, okay? So there's the nice colors of the char. The skin on one big piece. This is for me, this is for my cameraman and my other technician. Do you like the ratio here? Okay, so the reason I've left the skin on there, the skin is gonna protect the fish as it's cooking. So I'm just gonna be taking my Jamaican jerk and I've torn a piece of it. Oh boy, this is gonna taste so good. This is probably one of the healthiest way to have fish when you just put a seasoning on it. You're not using butter, you're not using oil. And don't get me wrong, I love butter, I love oil, but this is just a really healthy way to do the fish. And as you can see, I put quite a bit on there. I'm going to tap it on there and I'm going to try to place it on the grill so that it doesn't come off. You just take your actual fish piece and place it on the grill. I usually place it thick end in. Try to keep as much of the seasoning on there as you can. Okay, this one there. As that skin cooks, it's gonna become nice and hard. Okay, so you can start to hear it to sizzle. It's gonna turn up the heat a little bit, so we're at about 350 degrees. The key to doing this recipe is you don't flip the fish over. You don't put it in foil. You can do this recipe with a little foil tray and that way the liquids will actually keep the fish moist but I call this my dry barbecue grilled fish because as the oils are coming out of the fish they're actually going to come off and they're going to drip onto the grill and you're going to see the smoke coming up okay so we do not flip this fish you don't need to do that all you do is close it and for the size of the fish that we've had at about 300 to 350 degrees you let them cook for about 15 20 minutes now to finish off this style of barbecued fish, I turn the heat up for about the last five minutes, so we're running about 350 degrees. And I've done that so that the moisture on top of the fish, on the flesh side, is gonna get a little crispy, because I love to eat the crispy coating that's on top. So there's the fish right there. You can see that the smaller pieces are cooked a little bit more on the edges. So what you see here, the black, the charring, is only on the skin. So we're going to take one piece off and I'll put it on here and I'll show you what I mean by that charring. So when this would be served, you would take the skin away. So I'll just do that right here. See, there's the actual fish. So the flesh has been protected. Okay, so there's one piece there with the coating on it. And there's the skin over here. And we're going to get the second small piece. And we're going to put it just beside this and then the piece, the resistance, the big one. And I'm just gonna close this. You see that fish, how nice and moist it is on the inside? We have the crispy coating on the top. It's actually a seasoning, and this one is the Jamaican jerk, so it's got a little bit of the red color. So I'm just gonna place this down. My favorite part. Are you ready, folks? The highlight of the Tree River trip. Maybe I'll just eat the rest of the afternoon. I can taste your fish any time. Wow, this Tree River fishing really is an adventure. I hooked this fish just above the corner. It's a beautiful trophy char. And it came around the bend. Barb, you better hurry. And uh, we've got, this is uh, rapids number two to the left of us. They're pretty big. I hope this fish isn't going to go over there. Do you want to go in the water right here, Barb? Okay. I'll try to bring it over. Okay. Are you ready, Barb, if I swing it in? Wait, wait, stay there. Wait, wait, wait. It saw you, hon. Just wait. I'm going to try to bring it back in so you stay where you are, okay? I'll bring it right to your net. Because I... Uh, 
If this fish goes over those rapids, I don't think we're going to land it. It's so magnificent here. You can see with the terrain. Just wait, Barb. Don't str I'm going to bring it right to you, okay? Just stay, if you can, stay still. And you can see that big spinner in its mouth. Hold on. Right there. You got it. You got it. Keep him in the net. This fish hasn't been up very long. You can see that it's very silvery, much like a steelhead. And it's a female. And you can see just the faint spots all along the side. Kind of looks like a brook trout. And of course, a brook trout, a lake trout, an arctic char, dolly varden char, and a bull trout are a part of the char family. I'm just going to put it back down in this net. You know, I'm so happy that uh, Kim Rhodes came out with this net. Um, it's, this basket net is so nice because you can see the way this fish is just relaxing in there. It's almost like a cradle. And where Barb's holding the handle, you know, this net is, is uh, made out of fiberglass, so that's really stable to hold the fish. And I've seen nets break right here with some of the guys that have bought other Great Lakes nets because this is made out of plastic. I think they call this the yoke. This particular one is made out of heavy aluminum and it compacts right down. So it's just a nice system. You know, even if you go on a flying trip the way we have here, we flew all the way from Toronto to Winnipeg, Winnipeg to Great Bear, Great Bear all the way up here to the Tree River. And uh, we still pack, you know, nets and rods and fly rods, everything that we need, because it's nice to be prepared when you come up here. What a gorgeous fish, eh, Bar? You did a great net job. Okay, you watch. I'm just gonna slide it out, and it's gonna go over these rocks here with that current. This fish has tons of energy. I, it was going to go over the falls. Look at this. Watch it go right back out. No problem snaking over that shallow water. Now, let me show you some of the lures that we've been using to catch these fish. Okay, so here's an assortment of some of the spoons that have been wor working really well here. Let me also grab the spinner that I got that fish on because bright is really what seems to be working here. Okay, so here's a, a few variety of spoons. Okay. This particular one you can see is solid. It's got like a gold color and uh, it's got this yellow with the black mixed in. This I think is called the gator spoon. You can see that it's silver on one side and uh, this is the glow in the dark with the red and the black. And then this is one of Kim Rhodes' most favorite colors. And you can see how bright it is. Most spoons aren't painted on both sides but on these spoons he actually even paints the edge. Okay, so you can see this is a pearl color with those nice bright spots. This side is chartreuse with the black spots, okay? So what, what I would like to bring to your attention is the width of these spoons. If I hold them this way, you can see that they're progressively thicker. The spinner is uh, just a standard number four spinner with a bell body, but see how thick this spoon is? If I was fishing some deeper runs with really fast water, I would be throwing that spoon. It would sink very fast and give me a nice fluttering action. These two spoons are ideal for the same area that I'm fishing right now. And I thought I'd throw on the spinner first because with the spinner, I think the vibrations that that bell puts out is very important. You see that little inner ring that's in there? When that bell is spinning around like that through the water, that bell hits that ring that's inside and it spins also. And of course, when you combine the flash of that number four blade with the actual bell, it's a really good combination to get fish.